the challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you, Husky! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police was making his usual patrol from Dawson to Selkirk. With him was Andy Carruthers, a trapper who lived between the two towns. King, Preston's big, huge, husky lead dog, was breaking the trail ahead when suddenly a gray shape appeared. Preston, look up ahead. A wolf. Oh, oh King. I oh, hear King. Andy, give me that right here. You got him. Lie down, King. Stay right here, boy. Don't move. That's the first time I ever saw a timber wolf try to attack a dog team. It wouldn't unless something were wrong with it, Andy. Let's have a look. That wolf would have attacked King if he hadn't called him back. Something funny about that. Should have run away at the sound of the dog team. <sighs> Gee, what a big fella. Careful, Andy. Don't touch his head or mouth. Uh, what do you think was wrong with him? You see that thick saliva coming out of its mouth? Yeah. This wolf has rabies in an advanced stage, and it would attack anything it saw. Gosh. It was lucky you shot it before it got to King. Trouble is, it may have infected other animals in this territory. Yeah? There's an Indian village near here, isn't there? Well, there's one about five miles west of here. And they may have dogs and horses. Guess I better go over there. Some of their animals may have been bitten. I don't like to take my dogs. If any of their animals have been infected, it may be dangerous. Well, why don't you leave them with me? My cabin ain't far from here, and I got a shed I can put them in. It's a good idea, Andy. I'll leave King and the team with you and go over by myself. <laughs> About a mile the other side of the Indian village, toward which Preston was traveling, two men were filling bottles in a small cabin. The pale liquid they were pouring filled the cabin with a rank odor. <laughs> Them redskins can drink this stuff this morning, I can figure. They love it. It's enough to take the inside off a steel boiler. What do we care? As long as they're willing to trade good furs for it, we don't have to worry about what it's doing to them. I'll be glad when we get enough furs to pull out of here. I'm sick of making this. Heck, we ain't even started. We're staying here a long time. Why, this is the best trap in territory in a hundred miles. Those fox skin they're bringing in are worth a fortune. As long as we don't tangle with the law. Oh, there's no danger of that. This village ain't near a town, and the Indians have always been peaceful. We're far off the trail, too. Has Redbird got back from his trapping yet? Yeah. Brought in that last batch of furs today while you were away. Six of the finest pelts you ever saw. <laughs> Give them to me for two bottles. <laughs> Redbird's our best customer since he learned to drink. <laughs> He's sure a good trapper. Redbird put his small bundle of furs in the corner of his hut. White Fawn, his young squaw, looked at it anxiously. You not have good luck? No. Traps empty. This not good. Everyone say Red Bird best trapper in village. This not true. Me good trapper. Maybe trade furs for fire water. Oh, stop talk. Someone come. Looks like white man. Any of you speak English? Red Bird, come make talk. Are you Red Bird? Huh? You speak English? Huh? I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Police? What police want? I want to find out how many dogs and mules you have in this village. Can you tell me? Many dogs, three mules. Any of them been bitten by anything lately? Or any of them sick? No. Our mule come back with bite on leg. Oh? Red bird away trapping. Our mule get loose. Come back yesterday. I'd like to see it. Mule in shed. Come. You say the mule was bitten. Hind leg bleed. Maybe wolf or dog bite. Squaw, talk too much. Here, mule. Yes, it was bitten all right. 
What is the flesh torn off? That heel soon. Quite not bad. You say this mule's been loose? How long? Him gone two days. Maybe wolf or dog bite him. Redbird, I'm going to have to stay in your village for a few days. Will you take me to the chief? Mm. Come. Breakfast tasted good. Well, we better get out to the still and get to work. Not many hours of daylight this time of year. Yeah, I guess you're right. Hand me that parka, will you? I swear, you get lazier every day. And I ain't too lazy to have good ideas. Hey, here comes Redbird. I wonder what he wants. He ain't had time to drink up all that tarantula juice he bought yesterday. Uh, hello, Redbird. Come on in. You want more fire water? No, me want talk. White man come to village. White man? When? Yesterday. Who is he? Him uh, say him police. Police? Did he say anything about the fire water? Him not know. Him say him come look at animals. Look at animals? Sounds crazy, Nick. We better vamoose fast. Him make talk with chief. Him say maybe him shoot Red Bird's mule. Maybe you help Red Bird stop him. Well, why does he want to shoot your mule? Mule go away, get bite on leg. Leg not hurt bad. Him say mule get sick, must shoot. Him say mad wolf bite mule. Oh, he ain't after us, Nick. Must be a rabies scare. Yeah, but it ain't healthy to have him around. Redbird, he ain't got no right to shoot your mule. Don't let him do it. Chief say him law. Chief say Redbird do what law say. Now, we know white men's law better than the chief. Well, you need that mule. They cause many furs. Mm, me no. Me trade furs for firewater. Any other animals in the village he wants to shoot? Mm, dog of Kula, him sick. Police say him watch dog two, three day, maybe shoot. Kula not like. Nick, maybe we better Quiet. get out. Well, if I were you, I wouldn't stand for it, Redbird. Why don't you and Kula get rid of him? Hmm? What you mean? Well, he's all alone, ain't he? Him sleep in tent. You've got a good knife. Tonight when he's asleep. Use it. You mean kill? But Nick, a mountain. Well, you and Kula can take him out and bury him. Why, well, he just disappear. Nobody will know what happened to him. Then you won't have to shoot your mule. Mm, me no like kill white man. Maybe more white men come. We'll talk to him if they do. We'll say no white man was here. Oh, you see, we got a mule too. I don't want him shot. I tell you what I'll do. Here are two bottles of fire water. I'll give them to you if you get this white man out of the way. You give fire water? Yep. And you don't have to give me any furs for it. Mm. Me ask Kula. You better do it tonight. He might shoot your mule tomorrow. And it'll be too late. Mm. Maybe. Oh, uh, hello, white fawn. You want to see me? Redbird gone. Him not know me talk to you. I hope you understand why I think your mule should be shot. Redbird doesn't. Redbird angry. Me come to ask you not shoot mule. Redbird got no furs to trade now. Him poor. Why, I thought Redbird was the best trapper in the village. Him get many furs before white men come. White men? Well, there aren't any white men in the village, are there? Them near village. Does Redbird trade them furs? Me no tell. Redbird beat me. Does he trade them for bottles? You know? You know about fire water? Not exactly, White Fawn, but I may find out tomorrow. Not shoot mule? Not unless I have to. You are a good man. Thank you, White Fawn. Darkness had fallen over the Yukon, and King, Preston's big lead dog, paced back and forth in Andy Carruthers' small cabin. Well, poor old fella. <laughs> You're lonesome for your master, ain't you? Wish I could explain to you that's for your own good he's making you stay here. Now, come on. I'll put this rope on your collar, take you outside for a while. You're going to have to quiet down. Way past my bedtime, but I can't sleep with you whining and scratching your out all the time. Come on, Will. Hey, come back here. King! Kind of shot him, pulled that rope right out of my hand. Here, King, come back here. It's 
gone. Preston's going to take my head off for letting him get away. Well, ain't nothing I can do about it. Sergeant Preston was sleeping soundly in his tent in the Indian village when he was awakened by a warm tongue licking his face. What? <laughs> what? Why, King, old fella. How'd you get here? <laughs> oh, I see. A rope on your collar. You broke away from Andy. <laughs> You shouldn't have come, boy. <laughs> All right, fellow. Lie down here beside me. Can't help being glad to see you. I missed you. Everything was dark and silent in the Indian village. The wind had died down and the trees stood motionless. Beneath their shadows, two figures stole silently toward Sergeant Preston's tent on moccasin feet. As they neared the tent, one of them drew a long knife as the other silently pulled back the flap of the tent. Then suddenly a gray form hurtled through the air. <laughs> Take your away! Take your King! Who is it? All right, fella. Good boy. Guard him, King. Don't move, whoever you are. Now that dog will tear you to pieces. Well, it's Redbird. Guess I'd better take that knife. All right, King. Off him, boy. Get up, Redbird. I'm going to tie you and keep you here until morning. Preston sat in Redbird's cabin as the pale Yukon dawn broke over the hills. Redbird sat stolidly before him as Preston talked to him kindly. I know you're not a bad Indian, Redbird. Last night you were full of fire water. That's why you did what you did. The mounted police are here to help the Indians in the Yukon, not to harm them. You want shoot mule? Now, I know it's hard for you to understand that. But if you'll help me, I'll see that you get another mule. Him good man, Redbird. I could arrest you and have you hanged for trying to murder me. But if you'll help me, I won't do that. What, what me do? I want you to get more fire water from these white men today. Have you any furs to trade? Them give me two bottle today for kill you. Oh, so it was their idea. They'd be rid of me, and you'd get to blame. Now, I want you to go and collect those bottles, Redbird. Don't tell what happened last night. King and I will follow you. Come on, we'll go to their cabin. Gosh, guess Redbird ain't wasting any time collecting. Hello, Redbird. Come in. Oh, did, uh, did you do it? Did you and Kula get him? Uh, sit down, sit down. Tell us what happened. Yeah, I got your fire water already. One bottle for you and one for Kula. Here it is. Uh, tell us, Redbird. Did you kill the white man or did Kula? Put up your hands under arrest. Watch him, King. A Mountie. You got nothing out of You know better than that. You're selling liquor to the Indians. Oh, we wasn't selling it. You we was... were giving it to him as a reward for murdering me. Thanks to this dog, it didn't work out that way. Get together. I'm handcuffing you. What's these men, King? Redbird. Got all the furs these men have. The furs that you and the rest of your tribe traded for liquor. Uh, we'll take them back to the village and distribute them among your people. If any dogs or mules are sick, these furs will get more for you. You can't take our furs. I'm taking you back to Dawson. You won't need them in jail. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time. This 